Hey there, it's Kevin Ward, and this story is, in an ironic sort of way, kind of painful for me because it just sends me back to my old ways of thinking and about how a scarcity mindset, i.e. otherwise known as a broke mindset, how much it can cost you, how much it costs you in hassle, in pain, in lost opportunity, in an enjoyment, and actually costs you in money. So here's what happened. I have an old friend that I've known for a long, 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 long time. And um, this last spring, he bought a Sea-Doo. Now, Sea-Doo is like the big jet ski. The big, it'll, it'll seat three people on it, massively big, almost like a little boat, but it's you straddle it. It's got a steering, a steering wheel thing on it or steering handlebars on it. And he got a great deal on it because the reverse gear on it, where you put it in reverse, was broken. And he's like, nah, who needs a reverse? You never use reverse on a, on a Sea-Doo anyway, so I'm gonna get it because I'm gonna get a great deal. But whenever you get the great deal and save money because something's not working on it, right? You're asking for trouble. But this is the way he thinks. And I get it because it's the way I grew up being taught. It's the way I th that thought, uh, thought for most of my life, and that is we always was like, save as much money as you can. You know, if you get a good, the way you get a good deal on it is you find something that's not quite right, but man, you can get a good deal on it and you just live with the, the problems and so forth. So here's what happened. He took his new sea doo out for the first time, launched it on the lake, and he was going to take it over to the dock and it wouldn't run right. Now, he was smart and planned ahead, so he had a paddle on the sea dude just in case it wouldn't run right. Well, it was a windy day. He got caught out in the wind and he got past the dock and it was like he was couldn't get back to the dock and so he grabbed the paddle and he starts paddling his way to make it back to the dock and as he's doing it, after about three or four strokes, all of a sudden he feels this pop in his shoulder and it's like, oh, a stab of pain. He's like, oh, that hurt. And then he just keeps pulling it, and he, but he's got to get back because the wind's blowing him away from the dock. So he's got to get back. So he's just humping it and paddling it, and the pain just kept getting worse and worse. And by the time he finally gets back to the dock, he's just in excruciating pain. And long story short, he had completely torn loose one of the muscles in his shoulder from the bone. I mean, it was just completely, literally torn loose. Now, he didn't know that at the time, but... After five or six months of excruciating pain, or four or five months, however many months of excruciating pain and discomfort and not getting better and not being able to move it, he's like, mm, maybe I need to go get it checked with a doctor. He goes, get it checked. They look at it. They do whatever they do to it. And they go like, it's completely torn. We're going to have to do surgery to fix it. Now, he's older than I am. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to go through the surgery. So he went through the surgery and they fixed it. Now, it was... Pretty intense surgery and, uh, you know, cost him a few thousand dollars with insurance deductible and all that kind of stuff. And I got a text message from him today, or yesterday, no, it wasn't today, it was yesterday. And here is the text message. He said, I asked him how he's feeling and all that. He goes like, oh, it's not too bad. It's not so bad now. The pain was bad. I finally got the right painkiller at the first day. Now all is well. The worst thing is that I have to wear this $1,200 sling on his arm to hold his arm steady. $1,200 sling for four months, day and night. That's the text message. Now, what's the biggest thing? One, f four months of your arm being in a sling after four or five months of being in excruciating pain. And... His biggest complaint is he had to pay $1,200 for a sling that insurance would not cover. This whole surgery and everything cost him a few thousand dollars. Again, insurance picked up the most part of it. And I'm like, dude, if you had just bought a brand new Sea-Doo, you would have paid no more money than you ended up paying for a broken Sea-Doo and a surgery and a $1,200 sling. Now that, my friends, is an illustration of the cost of our choices. Now, I want to break it down for you a little bit here because these are lessons that I've learned, the lessons that I'm learning in my life. And I want to hear your comments because you may disagree with me on some of these, on some of my lessons learned. So I want to hear what you got to say. 
and many things happen to you like this. If you've ever made this kind of a decision to save money and it ended up backfiring and costing you more money. But the thing is, it didn't just cost you more money. It actually cost dad more. It actually cost him more in time. It cost him more in pain. It cost him more in all kinds of stuff. So I just start. Here's the lessons I'm taking out of this. Number one is choices have consequences. Our choices have consequences. The choices that we make have consequences in our lives. And we make a choice that we made to save money and then all of a sudden this it creates these other things. Now, here's the thing. That he didn't just make the choice to save money. He also made the choice on a day in day out basis, he never exercises. He's not in shape. And so when he grabs a paddle and all of a sudden turns this hard pull in the water with this several hundred pound or may, I don't know however heavy it is, this, this uh, sea dew and you're, the wind's blowing against you and all of a sudden you start pulling is that hard, you put strain on muscles that are not conditioned for that and guess what? Something's going to break and that's what happened. So it, and, and you don't think about that, but it's like your choices of the way you treat your body and all of that have consequences when you're not prepared for something. And all of a sudden, bam, you have another consequence. So we started out to save money and then it ended up costing us more money because of something totally unrelated to the sea dew but now you got health issues and all this. And it's not just the cost uh, of money, financial cost, it's also the cost in quality of life. It's the cost of having to endure and suffer pain for months and then not being able to use your arm for another four months because it's in a sling night and day. So, one lesson learned. Choices have consequences. Not just a choice of what to buy, but choices of decisions we make about how we take care of our body and take care of anything. We take The way we take care of our money, the way we take care of our stuff. Second lesson that I take away from this, and that is, I remember something Zig Ziglar said years ago. And he said, when you when you invest in the best, you only suffer once. <laughs> and what he meant by that, when you go to buy something, buy the best, buy something that will last, buy something that works right, buy something brand new, because it's more painful up front if you have to pay more money for it, but you'll only have to be in pain one time, and that is when you have to part with all that money, and it's like, ah, this is more expensive than I thought. But you're, but once you do that, you're going to get a better, a better product, whatever it is you're buying. You're going to get a better product that's going to work for you the whole time, and you're going to enjoy it more, and it's going to last longer because you invested in something that was good. Now, I'm not opposed to you buying used stuff, like a used car, pre, or pre-owned, as they call them now, or pre nothing wrong with the pre-owned thing. But again, you, it just has consequences. When you buy something, you're going in, you know it's broke, you bought something broke. And so you now your time, you're going to spend time compromising with and having to negotiate and deal with the thing that doesn't work right because you bought something broke to save money, which leads us to my third takeaway from my observation, and that is start focusing on having more money and stop focus on saving money. And when I say saving, I'm not talking about just putting money in savings. I'm talking about buying stuff, cheap stuff, so that I don't spend as much money. So I just saved $1,000 by buying this used thing that was broken, okay? Focus on making more money, not saving more money. Raise your income and you save time and money. See, think, look back. If he had, if he had taken and bought the best, invested in the best, bought a brand new sea dude, then chances are, one, he had never had to have a paddle on that boat. And because it would have been a new boat and it would work and he would be able to go out, enjoy it. And from day one, he'd be able to enjoy it more, spend more time. He would not have injured himself, would not have had to have surgery and all of that stuff. And you could enjoy something nicer the entire time. My friend, if you are one of the people that is like I was, that looks at stuff and goes like, that's too expensive, that's ridiculous, that's a rip off, I can't afford that. It's not that things are too expensive, it's just that you're too broke. 
and I don't mean that in an insulting way, so please don't take it that way. It's just that you, if you had more money, you would not think that same way. Okay, well, it's still a ripoff. I get it. Okay, I get it. Almost everything you buy today, it's a ripoff. But that's what it costs to buy the stuff that you want. So guess what? I, this is one of the things I've said for years. I decided I want to make enough money that I can afford the ripoffs of the world. And when you focus not on how expensive things are, but focus on, I can make the money to be able to buy the things that I want. I want that. What do I need to do? I need to make more money. And I make enough money, then I don't have to look at the price tag. I just look at what I want. I want to be able to help somebody. Well, how much is it? I, don't, I can't afford to help them. Well, if you have more money, you can afford to help people. And you don't have to ask how much it is. How, what do you need? Perfect. Here you go. Okay. Just having, so when you think that it's not that things are too expensive or I don't have enough, it's that I, how do I get more? And this shift is from a scarcity mindset of there's not enough, I can't afford it, that's too expensive, to an abundance mindset that says, what do I want? What do I need to do to get that? How do I make more money? Because all of the, all you, when you ask those questions, you find the right answers for that. A scarcity mindset, my friend, is costing you. It's costing you opportunity. It's costing you time. It's costing you grief. It's costing you frustration. And it's costing you enjoyment. Abundant mindset. In every market, in every economy, in every time, an abundance mindset will lead to an abundant lifestyle. I want to hear your thoughts. I know this is a, one of those sensitive conversations. We talk about having money, making money, making a lot of money, having a lot of money, and all that kind of stuff. So I want to hear your thoughts, but I just want to look at how different a life can be when you come from a place of abundance rather than a place of scarcity. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel and you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel for most of the time it's real estate training, but sometimes I just go like, you know what? I think I need to talk about life and winning. So I hope the video has been helpful for you. We'll talk soon.